Regis here with Music Marketing TV. Today we're looking at Sonable's new mastering meter suite, uh, True Balance and True Level. So True Level aims on getting your level just right. This is a combination of loudness and dynamics. And True Balance looks at it from a spectral point of view and tries to help you sort of even out your track to match the genre that you're doing. And one thing that these do both extremely well is they encourage the use of reference tracks and make it super easy to use them. So we can simply switch our target from the, the pre-made targets, so they've got a whole bunch of pre-made ones, over to reference targets, so that we can sort of aim for what we want here. And on the true level, this is also true. So you've got a loudness target, and this is platform specific. And then you've also got a dynamics target. This is gonna be your genre. And of course, it'll always be better, at least I always encourage you to use a reference track. And the reason you want to use reference tracks is you can match what they did. And a lot of the times, if your setup isn't acoustically, you know, ideal, this is a fantastic way to quickly check it. So even if you're new, or even if you're old, these are, these are really nice, they, they really simplify some of this process, so it's really cool. So this track I have here that we're going to be listening to, um, it's a track called Drop Low. It's heavily based on tracks by Abstract. So I'm kind of curious uh, how close I got. <laughs> the ear will always be king. You should always use your ear above everything else, but meters are fantastic for this. Um, and you should always listen in multiple environments, like over your headphones, over your monitors, in some cars, wherever you intend for it to be listened to, try to go there and listen. Um, that Just as a just a little warning, don't, don't blindly trust the meters. But... We're going to be using for the reference tracks two tracks by Abstract that I used when I was going when I was creating this. So I've already got them loaded up here, but let's go. Let's start from the very beginning because I think it's important to see just how quickly stuff loads. Um, it kind of is a testament sometimes to if the programming is good or not. So let's really quick see here. So I'm just going to drag them over. We've got here a true level, and I am sticking these after the mastering and limiting that's been going on because I do not want, you know, it, it should account for that. So I'm going to put those there. I want to see the whole enchilada. Okay, so there they are. You saw they load up very quickly. Now to load up the reference track, I'm simply going to click on the plus icon. And I have mine in documents, music references. We'll just load these up. They load very quickly and you can load more than one at a time, which is a fantastic little detail that I love to see stuff like that. So we'll go ahead and get these in here as well. So let's take a look at each one individually. So first over here, we've got True Balance. By the way, these plugins are resizable, which is another always uh, fantastically welcome thing. So you can see where the yellow, the red and the blue are. They're sitting right here. And at the top, we can see the levels for this and they, they give you a difference value. And you can click on a balance check and it can kind of give you like a warning on whether or not you're, you're quite in the balance. Obviously, I am quite a ways out of the balance. If you want to use the more general scopes, you can see they're actually pretty close. Over here on the references, we've got our different ones. So you could use electronic, universal, speech, and whatnot. But again, reference tracks, few have references that you use, they're just better. So that's what the top's going to say. And then the bottom, it gives you your width. So the only values you should really be worried about is if the correlation goes below zero. If it's zero or lower that you are going to run into potential phase issues. So we want these to be high and the base in particular, this can be a little bit of a red flag. You kind of want the correlation to be higher, much closer to one typically, unless you don't intend for it ever to be played over a big system. Like if it's always just going to be over headphones, then you're going to be fine. But anything else, uh, the base, you generally want the width to be lower. The mids and highs, they could kind of go a, a lot crazier. And you only need to be worried if these values get like kind of extreme and you start seeing these dip below zero. Then when you sum to mono, you might have problems. So if we just play this here now, it, it will take a second because the track, right, has the intro and then there's the bass. So I recommend you play through your track and just sort of watch it all. In the interest of time, let's just uh, see the beginning of the track here. And right now we're going off the top of the screen because I'm listening to it after the mastering chain. So I'm going to bring this down just so we can get a better view of it.
And you can see I'm actually uh, pretty close. Now in the green boxes up here, if we're in that range, we're good. There are, there are a few sections where I go a little hot compared to it, uh, but they, they settle down at other sections. And you can see the width on the low end. I, I tried to circle it a little, a little bit. I wanted to get to the drop so you could hear, you know, you get a little bit more of how this is going to settle out. Um, the width on the low end is very small, but I have huge widths on the mids and highs, and it just really opens up the song, the, the track and all that. So I really like that, but you see the correlation is like way lower here. So I went kind of crazy with these. Um, I don't mind that at all. And the low end's gonna be rock solid. So I think it's, it's pretty fine. Um, now over here on the true level, or I guess while we're here too, I wanna show you real quick. They have a, a pretty cool mono check and it's weird because when you're not playing anything, don't pay attention to these values. Um, when you when you do mono check, a, another line at the top will appear. And unless you see a regular pattern in that line, you're fine. So if you see a regular pattern, that means you, you probably have some sort of weird comb filtering thing that's going to happen when you go to mono. It's pretty r rare, though, unless you've set up something like a delay um, between the two channels for like stereo widening. And then you sum that back down. So maybe if you use that for like a vocal technique. So you might want to rely on a different technique uh, for that. So mono check can reveal this. Um, so yeah, I, let's just play it real quick and look at that. So that's what's going on there. Just so you're aware of sort of how these things sit together and what you can kind of look for. You saw it's just kind of like randomly moving around and that is a good thing. That means that there's no, there's nothing that's setting up a constant pattern in your track. So the widths and the other, and then on the other side, I, I do look at a lot of other student mixes and a lot of the times all the widths are very low and the correlation is very high on all of them. And it just, it just sounds so down the middle. Um, so this is also a great way. If, if this number is overly high, you might want to consider changing things to add space to your mix. Otherwise it's going to be very much just straight down the middle. It won't be a very wide sound. Uh, so over here, we up next, we have true level. Now true level has two bits to it. Um, that could be somewhat confusing. They create these crosshairs. And what it is, is, is there is a dynamic axis and a loudness axis. So loudness is perceived loudness in LUFs. And this is, if you were to ask a person how loud something is, this is what they, they would say. Uh, this comes from a standard. All you need to know is it's, it kind of accounts for how humans perceive loudness. Um, whereas dynamics refers to the change in, in level from loud to soft. So if there's a huge amount of dynamic shift from like soft to loud, you're going to, you know, that's, that's large dynamics. And as you make things louder, the dynamics tend to get scrunched down into a, a lower region. Cause if you consider like a limiter, um, when you limit something, you're going to be taking the things that were the loudest part and the softest part and squishing them together. So your dynamic value of your track, the, the amount of dynamics possible in your track We'll get a lot lower uh, and this is very common for pretty much every genre and this is because of things like limiters and compressors and why it's called the loudness wars you really want to strike a balance again i recommend using reference tracks dubstep is typically just incredibly squashed a uh, very very little dynamics are in it and there's a very high loudness value some services will also do normalization to your sound but some still don't so it's kind of like a a game on where you're going to release like i believe itunes still doesn't have it on by default so um if you have a high luffs value i believe you still have like you'll have an edge in that regard i suppose so uh, you just want to be aware of that kind of stuff um so for ours it's an electronic track so it's not going to have so much dynamics maybe the intro because it'll be a lot softer there if you could if you think of something like classical music where some notes are very soft and then it gets very loud um that's going to be uh give you a wider dynamic range so um it's gonna that's why classical music is gonna be so different than like electronic music so what we do is we give it some references they also have here you can set your own if we come down here to set loudness target you can set these here and each platform will typically have like kind of published somewhere what they want and you can match that 
Uh, for me though, I'm gonna be using the reference tracks because this is what I'm going after. And it will compute some crosshairs and define this region. So if I click to exclude one, you can see one track is quite a bit hotter than the other, which I found very interesting actually. Uh, but yeah, if you put them on, so this is sort of the box I'm aiming for. If I wish to be similar to these reference tracks, and I can also compare my spectral balance. So this really helps you just get the same balance and loudness of the track so that, you know, if you wrote stuff that is similar, it should come across in a similar kind of way. I'm actually really happy about how close this was because it was because I did it by ear at the time. So that's kind of cool. Um, one other thing you, you may want to be aware of is there's this integrated in short term and momentary. Uh, this will change the values up here if we click. And all it is is it's a different window. So integrated is what we care about when we're going to a service. And this is when uh, you generally want to restart your measurement at zero and then play through your track. And that will be the integrated loudness. And that is what tracks, I believe, look at. It may have changed recently. I'm not entirely sure. But the integrated one has traditionally been like the most important one. You have short term, which has a rolling window. Like it checks like every, I think it's like three seconds. And then the momentary is even shorter. I think it's like, it's in the milliseconds range, like half a second or something, 400 milliseconds. Yeah, 400, 400 milliseconds if we hover over it. So they're just different ranges of loudness. I leave mine on integrated. That's the one I usually care about the most. Um, so let's go ahead, let's just play through. And now for this, when you're, when you're moving your crosshair around, you are going to want to play through your track and let it slowly move because this intro is softer than the drop. And by the end, the crosshair will, will creep up here. So this one, we might not get all the way there, but if I go ahead and play some of it. So we can see sort of where I'm sitting. So I just nudge over the threshold here. Looks like I might actually need to reduce my dynamics a bit. So I could, uh, this would in theory say I should maybe increase my limiting a little bit, or there are some sounds that maybe I could compress a little bit more. Uh, but I'm right there on the lower end of the box. So if I wanna get further in, looks like the dynamics would be kind of the thing I want to target more and I could maybe push the limiter a touch harder. Uh, in fact, pushing the limiter harder might just like push this up. Uh, but when, when, I, when I'm looking at the histograms here, these are the values that sort of occur the most. So these values don't occur so often. These ones occur the most. So you can see here, one of the most occurring values sits right around here at 12 luffs. And then my dynamic peak is just outside the region too. This is another emphasis. Maybe I want to scoot a bit over if I really want to sound like these tracks. So this is pretty interesting. Um, of course, I'd want to let it play through the whole thing so I get like the entire picture. That way I can sort of make my decisions based on that. But that's basically what these mean. You also have some meters over here. You've got a true peak and an RMS meter. RMS is better for like average levels. So if you're going to set the relative level of something compared to something else, you want to use RMS meters. If you're interested in like peaks and, and squashing stuff and compression, you kind of want to be you want to be aware of the peaks. So you may want to use a peaking meter for that. And then yeah, you've got like your dynamics, luffs, all that stuff. But that's essentially what these tell you. So there's a ton of information. 100% of it's useful. Usually there's something in, in these plugins that's just not as useful, but uh, it's all useful. And they even have these like nice little buttons that if you're brand new and you don't know how to interpret all this stuff, it'll do some of the interpreting for you. It'll be like, oh, well, I don't know. Like if we check our level here, let's go over to like where drops happening. Maybe the second drop. <laughs> Yeah, see, it's telling me right here, dynamics seem too high. So you can see it, it'll interpret it a little bit for you. So this is super beginner friendly too. Uh, but just looking at this, it's like, yeah, we might want to squash these a bit and bring them into this region so we get a little less dynamic range. And then 
that will push our loudness up a little bit more. We'll get a little bit closer to this target. This red one is pretty dang high though. Like that's minus six luffs so loud. That's crazy loud. I wonder if this is an older track or not. I'm gonna have to look it up because yeah, that's that's really loud. Um, but anyways, yeah, that is that is true level and that is true balance. That's what they're there for. They're just tools. Take them with a grain of salt, use your ear. Uh, but they are extremely informative and sort of just can really help you stay away from anything that might escape you in terms of your particular setup's faults. It can help you catch that, maybe even lead you to adjust your setup so it, you just make better decisions from the get-go. Another reason you want to use these is when you see these issues, in this case, I'm going to be touching a limiter to fix it, but over here, uh, instead of adjusting just like a bus or something, you can go into specific elements of the mix that might be causing the issue, like uh, my high end, for example, was doing stuff. So maybe I look over at maybe the bases high end, or maybe I adjust the hats. Maybe the hats are what I think the problem is. And so you're not just like using an EQ as like a band aid fix. You actually go in and adjust the mix in a meaningful way. And this will be informative for the next time you produce a track. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos. And have a blessed day.